In this video, we're going to discuss one of the most important theorems in calculus. It's called the extreme value theorem. So extreme value theorem. And the extreme value theorem basically says that every continuous function on the interval a, b has an absolute maximum and minimum. And the interval has to be closed. So we have to include the endpoints. So it says that every continuous function, so continuous function on the interval a, b has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. So I'll just say and minimum. Oh, well, I'll say it again. And an absolute minimum. Both. So let's go ahead and do an example of applying uh, the extreme value theorem uh, to find the absolute maximum and minimum of a function on a closed interval. So I have one here, I haven't done it, but it looks like a decent uh, first instructive example. So f of x is going to be equal to 2x cubed minus 6x, and we're going to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of this function on the interval 0, 3. So the way to do this is uh, think about it as follows. Recall if a function has a critical number, or rather if a function has a maximum or a minimum, then it has a critical number. So critical numbers could be maxes and mins. The other place where you could have a max or a min is at the endpoints. So in these problems, all you do is you first find the critical numbers that are between 0 and 3. So step one. you find the critical numbers. So find CNs in 0, 3. Because critical numbers could lead to maxes and mins. Not always, but they could. So to find the critical numbers, you take the derivative of the function, and you look to see where it's undefined or where it's 0. So taking the derivative here, we will get 6x squared minus 6. So this is never undefined, and so now we set it equal to 0. All right, so uh, let's see. I guess we can uh, add 6. So we get 6x squared equals 6. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. So we end up with uh, x squared equals 1. And when we take the square root, we do get x equals plus or minus 1. However, we only care about critical numbers that are in our intervals. So negative 1 is not between 0 and 3, right? So um, we only include 1. So 1 is our critical number. This is our CN critical number. All right, now we just have to figure out if it's actually a maximum or a minimum or nothing at all. So what we do is we just take it and we plug it into the function along with the endpoints. The biggest number we get is the max, and the smallest is the min. So step two is plug CNs, so critical numbers, if there's more than one, and endpoints. So the endpoints are the A and the B, so the 0 and the 3, into F of X. And the biggest number is the max, the smallest is the min. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's do f of 0. So plugging in 0 into our function here, we get 2 times 0 cubed minus 6 times 0. So we just get 0. So f of 0 is equal to 0. Let's do 3 now, f of 3. So we get 2 times 3 cubed minus 6 times 3. So 3 cubed is uh, 9 times 3, right? It's 3 times 3 times 3. So 2 times 3 cubed is going to be 54. So this is 54 minus, and then 6 times 3 is 18, and 54 minus 18 is 36. So 36. 
So we've checked our endpoints, and now we just have to check our critical number. So f of 1, this is 2 times 1 cubed, minus 6 times 1. This is 2 minus 6, so it's negative 4. So that's negative 4. Okay, so all we do now is write the answers down. So the biggest number is going to be our maximum. So it looks like 36 is our maximum. So we did have the max at an endpoint in this case. And our minimum uh, is negative 4, because that's the smallest one, so that's our minimum. And that's it. That's the extreme value theorem and how you use it. So the extreme value theorem says that whenever you have a continuous function on a closed interval, you're always going to have an absolute max or an absolute min. And uh, the way to find it is you take the critical numbers, find those, uh, find the ones that are in your interval, then plug in the critical numbers along with the endpoints into your original function. The biggest answer you get is the max, the smallest is the min. Sometimes you can have the max appear twice, right? You could have a function you know, that does, you know, that does this. You know, you could have the max appear three times, right? You have one, two, three maxes, one, two, three, four mins. That could happen, right? It could happen multiple times. I hope this video has been helpful.